Hey there, it's been a while, hasn't it? The past few months have been a little bit crazy for me, so I'm not going to get too much into it. Instead, how about we go straight into what you came here for, the custom specials. If you're new here, we're going to be going into custom specials in Smash Ultimate, adding one new special move for every single character in the game, starting today with Wii Fit Trainer. We are going in order of the roster, so if you missed any previous episodes, you can check them out in the link in the description or the pinned comment. Now that we're getting into Smash 4, some characters come with complex mechanics built into their gameplay, so we have to kind of work around them instead of just replacing them entirely. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get started. Wii Fit Trainer! One of the problems I had with Wii Fit Trainer is that all of their moves come from the original Wii Fit game. Unfortunately, because they had to fill out the entire moveset, there aren't actually many moves left that we can choose from. So the custom moves I've chose for Wii Fit Trainer is just more trying to squeeze out whatever I can from the game, instead of moves that would actually be optimised for Wii Fit Trainer. Basically, all of these moves are crap because there's nothing else to choose from, so keep that in mind. Their neutral special would be Palm Tree. This is similar to Sun Salutation, with Wii Fit Trainer doing a pose and charging up a projectile. The projectile can be stored for later or released when you leave go the button. Unlike Sun Salutation, which is a fireball projectile which hits once, Palm Tree would be a water-based projectile that will be a multi-hitting move, dragging opponents along with it up to a certain distance. Side Special would be Torso Twist. This is similar to Marth and Lucina's Side Special, with you having to press the button multiple times in order to get the whole move to come out. The move itself would have four parts and would have the Wii Fit Trainer twist their torso side to side with their arms stretched out. Up special is Standing Knee Jump. This will have the Wii Fit Trainer raise one of their legs while you're charging it up, and when you leave the button go, they would slam their legs back into the ground, launching themselves upwards. If an opponent is underneath Wii Fit Trainer and is hit by the legs slamming down, they would be meteored. Down special is Rhythm Counter, which is taken from the Rhythm Boxing minigame. This would work similar to Incineroar side special, having three different variations depending on when you press the button. Just pressing down special would have the Wii Fit Trainer block with their arms forward, reducing the damage they take by 75% and reducing their knockback they take from a single move to basically zero. However, if you press the B button again while the move is getting blocked, they would counter it. Again, like Incineroar's side special, if you press the B button with imprecise timing for the counter, they would do a single weak hit, but one that can be followed up with other moves such as a grab or an aerial. However, with the right timing, the Wii Fit Trainer would perform two hits, with the second one being much more powerful. I think Wii Fit Trainer having a unique counter like this will help make themselves different to every single other counter in the game. Rosalina and Luma! Being that Rosalina has the Luma alongside her, I have to keep that into account when making moves for the pair. Neutral special would be Luna Warp. Similar to her regular neutral special, this is able to help you position your Luma around you to help attack better. However, instead of the usual charging up in order to send them forward, this would allow you to direct Luma in the same way to a teleport up special. Like most teleports, this will deal no damage, however you would have much better control over your Luma. Rosalina's side special would be Warp Star. This would have Rosalina's current Luma turn into a Warp Star, and similar to the item already in Smash Bros, would fling any opponents that are nearby. This version won't send you as far as the item version of it though, and Luma would automatically disappear as if she was KO'd after using this move in order to make it not too overpowered. Up special would be Spin Jump. This is the ability that Rosalina teaches Mario in the first Mario Galaxy game, and is an ability she can perform herself in some of her playable appearances, like Super Mario 3D World. Down special would be Star Field. This would have Rosalina put a force field around herself, similar to the way that she puts a force field around her spaceship while travelling through space. While the force field is active, it would automatically reflect any projectiles hit by it and would reduce the damage taken by regular melee attacks. However, while in this state, Rosalina becomes very slightly slower and less floaty. The star field would be active for 10 seconds and would automatically break if it takes up to 45% worth of damage. And then it will have a decent amount of cooldown so this move won't be overused. Little Mac. 
Now, Little Mac is an interesting case. Obviously, we want to make him better than he already is. However, I don't want to change his fundamental design, that being a ground-based fighter. Also, he has almost no source material that already isn't in Smash, so me and my friends in Discord had to make most of this up. Shoutouts to them, by the way. Neutral special would be Star Uppercut. This is basically the only move Little Mac has that isn't in Smash Bros. but is in his original game. This is a chargeable spinning uppercut with three different charge levels. In the Wii Punch-Out game where this game is from, you're able to gain stars while hitting an opponent during a certain time. Depending on how many stars you have when performing this move, the move would become stronger and would consume all the stars available. In Smash Bros, it would be similar to that, however, instead of consuming stars, it would consume the meter for your KO punch. When inputting this move without any charge, it won't consume any of the KO meter, however, the move would be relatively weak. Charge level 2 would consume 2 out of 10 bars of the KO punch meter, and charge level 3 would consume 4 out of 10. When you manage to get your KO punch bar full, then it would act like normal releasing a massive punch that is basically a one-hit KO move. Side special would be Cross Shot. This is a mix of his regular neutral special and his regular side special, with Little Mac jumping and dashing forward and hitting with a cross punch while landing. When using this move in the air, it will have much less end lag compared to his regular side special, making it much easier to act out of and therefore recover. Up special is Up Surge, which is basically just a rip-off of one of me Brawler's Up Special, which is a multi-hit uppercut. This move will go a decent bit higher than his regular Up Special and would be able to snap to ledge, which would hopefully make things a lot easier for Little Mac. The move can also be angled very slightly left and right when first inputting the move, which would hopefully make it easier to hit opponents with. Down special would be Pivot Counter. This is based on pivoting in boxing, and although this is a counter, this would work similar to Mithra's Foresight Dodge ability. When countering a move, Little Mac will slip around them and punch them from behind. This punch is not very powerful, however you're able to cancel the move, making this a very good combo starter. Originally, I didn't want him to have another counter for his down special, However, the only other idea I came up with was a blocking move similar to Joker's down special before he has Arsene, just blocking an attack and taking less damage and knockback from it. So I thought this would be better. Greninja. As I've said in previous episodes in this series, I don't really know too much about Pokemon, so I have to give a big thank you to Indy from my Discord for giving me some ideas for Greninja's custom specials. Otherwise, I would have just made stuff up like I usually do. Anyway, Greninja's neutral special would be Night Slash. This would be a chargeable move that would have Greninja dash forward and slash two water swords in an X shape. Unlike his regular water swords, this would have a more of a purple effect, similar to some of Mewtwo's moves. This is because the move is actually a dark move and not a water move. Side special would be Smokescreen. This is similar to his regular side special, however the range is much shorter, and you can kind of travel in whatever direction you want instead of on the ground, making this move actually kind of similar to Sheik's up special. When Greninja appears on the other side of the smokescreen, he would have hit the opponent with his foot, dealing a massive amount of damage. Greninja's up special would be Faint Attack. This would be similar to a regular teleport up special, but would have a unique mechanic to it. Normally, using this move, you can teleport Greninja in an any upwards direction, which can be controlled with the control stick. However, if you input up special again, right when Greninja appears out of the teleport, he would actually attack again, automatically targeting any opponent close by, and hitting them in a similar way to his down air. The teleport part of the move has a massive range, but doesn't have many angles you can choose from when inputting different directions. The second part of the move with the kick is harder to perform because of the timing, however as this is an auto lock move, you can pretty much attack from whatever angle you want. Down special is Mat Block. This is a move practically exclusive to Greninja in the Pokemon games. When performing this move, Greninja would quickly pull out a mat and hold it in front of him. This would block any attack dealt to him by the front. When a move Greninja is trying to block does hit the mat, he would get a buff that would reduce the amount of knockback he takes by 10% for 8 seconds. 
This buff cannot stack with itself. I know this move seems kind of dumb, but because it's a practically Greninja exclusive move, I decided to throw it in there anyway. Palutena. Palutena's custom specials were actually pretty easy to come up with. That's because Palutena is one of the only characters in Smash 4 who actually had unique custom specials, besides the Miis of course. In Smash 4, some of her custom specials weren't that great, so we will be tweaking them a little bit here. Palutena's neutral special would be Heavenly Light. This will have Palutena raise her staff into the air and cause a massive amount of light-based projectiles to swarm the area around her. This move can keep opponents in a kind of constant flinching state while the projectiles are raining down, thereby dealing much more damage. The move also does quite a decent amount of shield damage as well, however it's not enough to completely break a shield from zero. Side special would be Angelic Missile. Think of this similar to Charizard's side special, however it won't be as strong and Palutena won't take any damage when using it. Palutena would fly sideways through the air and cause an explosion if she ends up hitting someone, with the explosion part of the move dealing a lot more knockback than usual at higher percents. Palutena's up special would be Jump Glide. This will have her jump into the air quickly and then slowly glide back down with her wings. The jump part of the move can be angled and like in Smash 4, you're able to do aerials out of this move. However, you would go into free fall afterwards. In Smash 4, this was a great burst movement option for Palutena, so seeing it back would be pretty cool. Palutena's down special would be lightweight. Like in Smash 4, this would give Palutena a massive increase in speed and jump height, for about 15 seconds. However, while in this state, Palutena becomes much, much lighter and therefore much easier to KO. In Smash 4, after the 15 second buff was over, Palutena would become really slow for about 5 seconds. Because of Ultimate's much higher gameplay speed, I think this buff should be changed to 10 seconds instead of 15 seconds and the cooldown should be about 2.5 to 3 seconds instead of 5 seconds. Also, while the lightweight buff is active, pressing down special would activate another one of Palutena's Smash 4 custom specials, that being Super Speed. When Super Speed is used, Palutena would dash forward in whatever direction she is facing. This dash would have something similar to the Impact Run Spirit, so when you hit an opponent with this move, it'll deal a little bit of damage and knockback. However, the best part of this move is that, similar to Up Special, you're able to act out of it, meaning you can dash towards someone and then initiate their dash attack, a grab, an aerial or even a smash attack. Similar to the move Lightweight itself, Super Speed would also have a 2.5 to 3 second cooldown after you use it once. So if we're making Lightweight last for 10 seconds, you'll probably only be able to use Super Speed about twice. So keep that in mind. Pac-Man! So I don't really know much about Pac-Man other than, you know, the arcade game. So let's just see what happens with this. I had to think of something really interesting for the neutral special because in the right hands, Pac-Man's neutral special is just completely crazy. So here's what I got instead. Pac-Man's neutral special will have him be able to choose from a variety of different pack pellets in the same way you can choose different fruit. You carry on holding down the button and it cycles through various pack pellets. The first one would be the Electroshock pellet. This will cause Pac-Man's tilts, aerials and smash attacks to deal additional electro damage besides the regular amount of damage they would deal. The electric damage dealt would be about 25% extra of what the original move would have done. So a move that would have done 10% of regular damage would now do 12.5% of electric damage. This buff would last for about 10 seconds. The second pellet would be the Shockwave pellet. This will cause Pac-Man to release a shockwave around himself every time he jumps. This shockwave would extend for a decent area around him and would be able to blast foes in pretty much any direction. This buff would last for 15 seconds. The third pellet would be the Super Stomp pellet. While this buff is active, pressing the special button will cause Pac-Man to slam his leg into the ground, causing an explosion. This explosion would be about as powerful as Steve's TNT blocks and will take about as long to wind up as a Falcon Punch. This buff also lasts for 15 seconds. The final pellet would be the Chrome pellet. This would give Pac-Man the ability of the Metal Box item, turning him metal, increasing his weight, and increasing the amount of damage he deals. However, like with the Metal Box item, if he gets put off stage, he's basically dead. 
All of these pellets mainly come from the 3D Pac-Man games. Psy Special would be Rev Roll, which also comes from the 3D Pac-Man games. This is a chargeable side special that would have Pac-Man roll into a ball when you charge it, and when you leave the button go, he will dash forward really, really fast. This will deal flinching damage to opponents and will drag opponents along with it while it's rolling. However, this move would automatically stop at ledges, so you don't have to be that worried about that. Up special would be Fairy Flight. Bear with me on this one because I'm still figuring it out myself. In the Pac-Man game, which is what Pac-Man stage is currently based off, you are able to save some fairies that would give you the ability of flight. In the game, this basically meant you had a whole bunch of extra jumps instead of being able to only do one. This allowed you to easily get over obstacles during the later part of the game. So it will basically be the same thing here. When using up special, Pac-Man would automatically jump up once. And then after that, he'll be able to use his double jump two extra times except for his regular double jump, meaning he has three double jumps instead of one. These two extra double jumps would go a decent amount higher than his regular double jump, meaning he's able to recover from basically anywhere on the stage. However, this buff would only last until you land on the ground. Once you land on the ground, you'll have to use up special again in order to get these double jumps back. Still with me? Uh, me neither. Let's move on. Pac-Man's down special would be Butt Bounce. This is for all intensive purposes a ground pound. When using this move on the ground, Pac-Man will jump into the air and then slam his body into the ground, dealing a decent amount of damage and burying any opponent underneath him. Using this move in the air would just make Pac-Man slam his body into the ground, which would also bury opponents. Robin! I initially thought that Robin would be pretty hard to make custom specials for, because of the whole Magic Tomb mechanic. However, then I realised that Fire Emblem's magic system works in a series of classes. Meaning, if I want to make custom specials, I just have to see what spells Robin can usually use, here being Thunder, Fire, Wind and Dark, and then just switch it out for a different spell in the same class. So, here we go. Robin's neutral special would be Mjolnir. I probably mispronounced that. This is the highest level thunder spell that Robin is able to use. This would be a chargeable move that would send a dark circular projectile forward, with it obviously changing sizes depending on how much you charge it. If this projectile hits an opponent, it will deal a little bit of damage and kind of stun them in place. Then after that, the projectile would explode, dealing a massive amount of damage to opponents and sending them flying. Also, when I say explode, I mean explode with lightning magic and not with fire, just to clear that up. The amount of tomb energy that this move requires would change depending on how much you charge it, however the maximum amount would be 35%. Side special would be Bolganon. Again, I'm probably mispronouncing this. This would be a fire type move, however it would work similar to Greninja's side special Shadow Sneak. Robin would make a small flame appear on the ground, and it would slowly travel forward. When you leave the button go, the small flame would erupt dealing a massive amount of damage to anyone caught in the flames. Like Greninja's side special, you can make this move move faster or slower by using the control stick. This move would use 45% of the fire magic tomb. Robin's up special would be Forseti, which is another wind attack. This would cause a sort of slipstream to appear underneath Robin and then shoot him up into the air. This move won't deal any damage, but can send opponents flying really far if they're caught in the slipstream. And this move would use 20% of the Wind Magic Tomb. Robin's down special would be Ruin. Robin can't actually use dark spells in his original game. Although Nosferasu is a move available in Fire Emblem, Robin can't actually use it. It was just completely made up for Smash Bros. Therefore, I'll be using another move from that family type for Robin's down special. However, he was also able to use this move in Fire Emblem Warriors. However, that's not really canon, so like, you know, whatever. Using this move would cause a hemisphere of dark energy to appear in front of Robin, dealing multi-hitting damage to anyone near it and sending them flying away. However, if you hold down the button, you can actually keep this move going for longer, dealing more damage, however the knockback received when the move is finished is decreased. The initial hit of this move takes 20% of your dark magic tomb in order to activate, and for every second the move is active after that, it takes another 12%. Shulk! So, originally, I wasn't even going to change Shulk's neutral special because it's, well, the Monado Arts. 
The Monada Arts are an essential part of Shulk's kit, so changing it to a different move entirely would pretty much wreck the character. However, that's when I found out that there are actually more Monado Arts in Zeta Blade that Shulk can use. In fact, Smash only uses three of the eight Monado Arts available to Shulk, with the Smash Monado and the Jump Monado just being completely made up. So for Shulk's neutral special, we'll be changing the Monado Arts to the other five available Monado Arts in Xenoblade. However, keep in mind that chances are these Monado Arts weren't chosen for Smash for a reason, and they may not fit that well with Shulk's gameplay. The first art is Armor. This will create a shield around Shulk that would slow him down slightly, however this shield would be able to absorb 45% worth of damage before breaking. Either that, or it will last for 10 seconds and it will automatically disappear. The next art would be Eater. This will grant Shulk's sword with a poison effect. The next sword attack that hits an enemy after using this art will inflict that enemy with the poison effect, dealing 2.5% of damage to the opponent every 2 seconds for the next 12 seconds. This ability only takes effect once, and after it was used, it'll go into cooldown. The next one would be Cyclone. This will cause your next side or up special attack to deal double the damage and knockback. However, this art has the longest cooldown of any of the arts. The fourth art would be Purged. This will reduce the attack, speed, and jump height of the next character hit by a sword attack by Shulk by 20%, for 10 seconds. And the final art will be Enchant. This will increase Shulk's damage and shield damage for all of his sword attacks. However, his attack speed will be slightly lowered. This effect lasts for 10 seconds. Now on to side special, Shulk will perform Stream Edge. This is an attack similar to what he does for his counter, with him jumping back and then slashing forward. There is nothing much to say here other than it's a sword attack. Up special would be Shaker Edge. This would be a two-part up special similar to Air Slash. First Shulk would jump upwards and spin around with his sword, pulling opponents up with him. And if you press the special button again, he would slash his sword downwards. If an opponent is hit by the second part of the move, they will be spiked. However, it would be pretty hard to get the second part of the move to connect. And obviously, after using this up special, Shulk would go into freefall. His down special would be Shadow Eye. In Xenoblade, this will reduce the aggro on Shulk by a certain percentage based on his level, and would also increase physical damage attacks by 50% for 5 seconds. Being that aggro isn't really a thing you can turn off in Smash, so I decided to change it to something else. When using Shadow Eye, all of the cooldowns for Shulk's Monado arts would be reset, and Shulk would still gain the 50% attack buff for 5 seconds. This will allow you to swap to a Monado art that's an already in cooldown and then deal a massive attack. However, after this 5 second buff ends, the move would go in cooldown for another 7 seconds, so you won't be able to spam this move all the time. So, that's another set of custom specials in Smash Ultimate. I do realise this took a lot longer than it should have had, and I have to apologise to you and say thank you for being so patient for it. I hope to start making regular content more frequently in the future, however I can't make any promises at this point in time. So, if you would like to see more of this kind of content in the future, you know the regular stuff to do. Like, subscribe, share the video around, and until next time, see ya!